few weeks ago, I was on this field. I was walking in between these plants on the soil. I could smell the soil and it was fresh. It felt like how real earth should feel like uh, as you're walking through the places where our food is grown. I was actually doing some work. And one thing that clearly struck me as I was walking through this field was how close our food is to the soil that it's growing in. This are these leaves that you see, these, these are lettuce leaves. And we're going to eat those leaves as salad. And you can see how close it's touching the soil. So how important it is for us to take care of the soil and think about what we put into our soil. I think that's very important. And that plays an important role in our lives, in our health. And it's a very complex problem. And I'll just briefly describe because it's a very uh, long structure of food system that we've created for ourselves. But it started with the Green Revolution when we found uh, some chemicals and fertilizers that could uh, in increase yield in our uh, agriculture. And those are chemicals that are added to the soil. Now these chemicals, uh, they are supposed to be uh, increasing yield, but they also get into our uh, rivers and our streams and our oceans. Uh, and uh, they have a huge impact on the animals that eat the food that's grown in the, on these soils. And then we harvest the, the plants and the animals as our food. And then it uh, starts a journey. It gets on transportation into an industrial system. And this has been going on for a, quite a long time. And it's fragmented food system. Uh, once it gets on, on the transportation, uh, vehicles and ships, a lot of the food is ripening on these, uh, on these uh, containers, in these containers. And why is that bad? Well, nature is an amazing thing. When food is growing on the plant and it's allowed to ripen, mature, attached to the plant, it's being nourished and nurtured, like any living thing should be. So when, when food is harvested early and starts traveling, uh, it doesn't have all the nutrients. It doesn't have all the things that you, you need uh, for your bodies. And then we add additives and preservatives and additional chemicals. So we are really changing the food from what it should be. And as we can see, it, it has a huge impact on our health. Um, just four days ago, uh, uh, CDC published uh, 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 an article um, showing how much abdominal obesity has increased uh, in, in children. And that's linked to so many uh, diseases, including uh, mental diseases, as well as just in general, how people, how long they live, how well they live. So food is really important. And you, you know that because uh, when, when we eat too much food, again, uh, you know, obesity or uh, overweight is a problem. When we don't eat enough food, we lose weight. What we don't really, what we don't really uh, think about a lot is what we are eating day to day and how that's impacting our health. And that's what we're going to talk about. So I'm Rajneesh Khanna, and I will tell you a little bit more about the food problem, which this transportation system that I just described is also having an impact on the health of our planet. As it's traveling, uh, the food safety issues and how much food waste, over 50% of the food that we grow is wasted in restaurants or, or in other places. Then water is going to be one of the major issues in the future. Uh, we need to conserve water and use it uh, appropriately to grow as best as we can uh, the food. Then the pollu uh, pollution and carbon footprint and all of these issues are there. So it's a very complex and fragmented food system. And it's, it's very complex and difficult to understand in a lot of ways. So I will show you a picture of Sarah Wally. She drew this simple diagram for me to simplify it. And this is really important to me because um, a fragmented food system, which is a linear line that I just showed you, is not the kind of planet that we live on. Our planet is circular. It's, it's a big circle. So what we put into the soil and what we eat, and then ultimately it comes back to the soil. And it's a circle. And plants are so important. They're at the heart at the bottom of all of this so if we if we grow good food uh, we have better health of animals we have better health uh, healthy people and we take care of the planet so we need to come back to a circle 
And how do we do that? Well, um, last year, uh, as I was thinking about these problems, I decided that something needed to be done about transparency. And one important thing I felt was that people need to know where their food is grown, how it is grown, so that they make their own choices. If, if you knew how your food was grown, I think you will be able to say, well, I want to buy this because this is better for me. So I started to talk, talking with several people and I realized that it was such an amazing give and take of ideas. And my idea was just a little seed. It grew uh, in so many different ways. I met some artists, I met some scientists, I met leaders in the food system. Uh, so I will cut that short, but just show you that this idea was put into a cardboard cutout by a couple of my friends, Graham and uh, his wife, Christmen, last year. And uh, so they basically uh, took what I told them and uh, we, uh, I started a company, Global Food Scholar, and the app that we were trying to develop, we at that time we were calling it Be Local. And this was an app, so this is a cardboard cutout. Uh, they made it at, as an iPhone. Um, and wonderfully we can see the idea right there that there's a farm and we can trace and track back where a tomato or an onion is grown. You go to a restaurant, you can uh, look at which farms the restaurant is sourcing from. You can, if you, like, if you want gluten free, you want lactose free, um, um, different types of uh, whatever your dietary needs are, you can uh, find the food that is good for you. And not only in restaurants, but in grocery stores, uh, in farmers markets. So this was an idea which they wonderfully uh, portrayed in this, uh, in this video. And that started a journey for me. Uh, I, I work at Stanford and uh, this is uh, the director of plant biology at the Carnegie Institute. And he uh, was very supportive of this idea. The former uh, director of plant biology. And then through these two people, I met Harold McGee. And Harold, as we know, is a celebrated uh, writer, author of uh, uh, chemi chemistry of food and cooking. And after I met with these people, uh, I was just amazed that they, everybody thought that this was a good idea and I should work on it. And then I started to develop my advisory board for the company. Um, uh, another professor at UC Davis and uh, her husband, an organic farmer. And then uh, I met a lawyer. <laughs> you need one for the <laughs> company. Uh, and then uh, locally, uh, there are, I've had a wonderful support from uh, people here uh, in Livermore. Lynn Sepla is one. And then recently I met Sarah Wally and I just uh, showed you uh, how she simplified the complexity of the food system. So now I had an advisory board for the company. But there was still one big problem. I'm a plant biologist. I know how to use an app. I don't know how to make one. <laughs> so uh, I had to find some people who knew how to make an app. And so these first two people first got on and uh, they made the database structure so we could start adding all the data that we're collecting. And then uh, uh, I needed some help with the uh, uh, treasury and finances, so Rob Pryor joined, and then Graham and Chrisman, uh, and by the way, this is in the order of uh, how uh, I met these people. Uh, Graham and Chrisman uh, make movies and videos and they sing, and so they, they added so much colorful and wonderful uh, ideas. Then uh, Alison, uh, she's a social media person, so she created a Facebook page, Twitter page, and she blogs. Uh, so things started to take on. And then I met Lynn, Monica, who had uh, a background in developing an app. And that just really took on uh, an entire new uh, era in, in terms of developing the system. She brought on John Allen, who is an app developer. So now there were all these people who could actually build an app. And obviously, there's always room for more work. <laughs> um, so so all, after all of this work, we have an app.
of design as well. So obviously there's not enough time to thank everyone who's been involved with this. There have been designers, there have been just amazing people joining into this cause and I've been very fortunate working with them. Uh, and I, we got this uh, logo, Discover Food Less Traveled, which is what we are working on. Now, coming back to the problem, um, the idea was to overcome this whole issue of the fragmented long food system and be able to find food that's around you. So we, we've taken this one step. What we've done is uh, created this shortcut. So you can take an app and uh, look at where food is grown and uh, connect directly with the farmer. And you can do that at farmer's markets, but you can also then now go to a restaurant and see where they're sourcing from, which is all great. There is still one problem. You can find the food, but is that food grown in the right way? And is it, is it uh, for your health? That's the other problem. And as a wise man once said, eat food, not too much, mainly mostly plants. This is a picture I took at a book signing. Um, and I met with him, Michael Pollan, and since then I've talked with him several times. And it's been, an, again, a great journey to uh, talk with people who have been studying this problem for a very long time. And now the next problem is really how we grow our food. And that's what I'm working on uh, as well next. And hopefully I'll tell you more about it in the future. Uh, but working with Sarah Wally, what we need to do is to bring back uh, the nutrients, the, the bacteria, the microbes, which have been lost because of all the chemical inputs into the soil. So we need to bring all of this back into the soil so that there is a better exchange of nutrients between the plant and the soil. Then the app can help you find the real food that's important for you. So we can improve our health. And so the field that I was on, that's, uh, I was doing uh, what I was doing there was collecting the roots of this lettuce so that we can work uh, on uh, finding what's in the soil. And the first story I told you was an idea that I had, and I wanted to build an app. And I went, I had to go out and find the experts and the people and build a team who can help me uh, do what I wanted to do. The second part is Todd DeSantis, who, who's a local and he's a microbiologist. And uh, this is something that he approached me. So this time I became one of the people who uh, can help him uh, do something. And he's, uh, he co-founded a company called Second Genome. Uh, and so we are working together to do something about the soil. The third part of the story is call to action. So I think you, you have seen what the food system is. Now, uh, I think it's important for you to go back and think of a problem that needs to be solved in this system so that we can all work together and uh, improve the health of the soil of the plants and promote the health of our planet and we make choices uh, to eat well and live a happy and healthy life thank you